disturbing definitions by me, Labby Chesley. Pause. It says here, pause. When I was younger, I concluded, decided, realized that if you can't define the words you use, in practical terms, you don't know what you're talking about. Hang on. Did you say when you were younger? You've never been younger. You've always been Sifri. Don't be silly. By younger, I meant having lived for a lesser length of time than the length of time I've lived up until this moment. So why didn't you say that? You said when you were younger. But you've never been younger. You've never been, for example, one of the American Wild West outlaw younger brothers. Jim Younger, John Younger, Bob Younger, and the more famous Cole Younger. The Younger Brothers, who rode with Frank and Jesse James in the James Younger Gang and robbed banks. You've never robbed a bank. Younger means younger. Not necessarily. <laughs> well, anyway, could you bring me a chair, please? I want to sit down. What's that? That's a chair from a doll's house. It's tiny. I can't sit on that. I need a chair I can sit on. Well, you can sit on that. A chair is a chair. Chair means chair. And of course, none of us would entrust the future fortunes of ourselves, let alone our children, to someone who defines the world in such absurdly narrow ways as younger means younger and chair means chair. We're all far too intelligent to fall for anything as foolish and irresponsible as that, though it should be noted that intelligent people can make foolish mistakes. The common problem is having the courage to admit it. But you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Define your terms. I realized when putting this talk together that it would take hours to cover my chosen subject, disturbing definitions. So this is an introduction to disturbing definitions. A selection of words, phrases, philosophies, the popular definitions of which I find disturbing and which in turn I wish to disturb. So first, politics. The activities associated with the governance of a country or area. And my definition? Politics, the wielding of persuasion, influence, power, control. Politics, the wielding of persuasion, influence, power, control. Next, religion. The belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. A particular system of faith and worship. And my definition. Religion. The wielding of persuasion, influence, <laughs> power, control. Religion. The wielding of persuasion, influence, power, control. Indeed, I would discard the word religion in favor of the term religionism, a belief system alongside other belief systems. Conservatism, liberalism, socialism, communism, totalitarianism, religionism. Hang on a minute. I'll allow that as you, verging on the margins of amusingly, point out, they have some features in common. But one thing differentiates religion from politics. Religion is about spirituality. Religion is spiritual. All belief systems are spiritual. Spiritual is the antonym of, the opposite of, corporeal. Spiritual of the mind. Corporeal of the body. So whether you're thinking of the shopping, the laundry, or how the universe was created, or of whether the universe was created, as opposed to it being eternal, 
or whether you're thinking of whether you should vote for this or that particular representative of this or that belief system, when you are thinking, you are engaging your mind rather than your body. You are being spiritual rather than corporeal, which lands me back replacing religion with the more homogeneously accurate term religionism as a belief system alongside other belief systems. Conservatism, liberalism, socialism, communism, totalitarianism, religionism. Put into practice, belief systems are politics. The wielding of persuasion, influence, power, control. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Excuse me. I'm receiving a note. I've just received a note. It's addressed to not younger. It's titled, A Note on Politics, and reads, Please note, if you read this note, it will become political. Spelt political. P-O-L-I-T-I-C-L-E. Yes. Oh, something on this side as well. If you happen to be the only person on a planet, lighting a fire is an apolitical act. Light a fire on a planet populated by more than one human being, and lighting that fire is a political act. I'll have to think about that. In the 60s and 70s, I read a great deal of science fiction. At last count, before moving my collection into charity shops, I had over 5,000 books of sci-fi. During all that time, science fiction was not viewed as serious literature. Now, literature prize winners are writing the stuff. I was annoyed at the genre being viewed with condescension probably because I felt people might have thought me shallow for reading so much of the stuff. But I had long ago stopped calling it science fiction. I had arrived at what I still consider a more fitting and more accurate defining term. Science fiction, prophetic sociology. Science fiction, prophetic sociology. Now we come to a defining phrase that I reject entirely. Finding meaning. We don't find meaning. We make meaning. We individually and collectively interpret the universe we live in. In that way, we accommodate ourselves to and survive in the universe. We don't find meaning. We make meaning. And then we lack the courage to accept responsibility for the meanings we make. If meaning is just lying around and we find it, we are not responsible for it. We've just come across it in untidy heaps scattered across a panorama. If we make meaning, that makes us responsible for the meanings we make. And that responsibility takes us out of our comfort zone. And so we define the process as finding rather than making meaning. Of course, rejecting responsibility for what we make is not confined to our species. We merely follow the time-honored example of the hypothetical celestial role model. Which leads me to a subject the hypothetical celestial role model has absolutely no interest in whatsoever. Democracy which my mind insists on defining as, yes, I'm sorry, collective responsibility. Contrary to the claim, not in my name, in a democracy, we the people, though not culpable, meaning we didn't directly do the dirty deed, are nonetheless collectively responsible for the policies and actions of the government of the day, even if we didn't vote for the buck, even... <laughs> 
even if we didn't vote for the party currently forming the government. <laughs> that collective responsibility is the price we pay for the great privilege of living in a democracy. Which leads me discomfortingly to a phrase as definition part of me wishes I had never ventured near and instead had listened to my inner police officer's voice saying, move along, move along, nothing to see here, move along. Unfortunately for my comfort zone, I stopped, stared, leaned closer, and examined the phrase, innocent civilians. In a dictatorship, most citizens are innocent civilians because they have no control over their government. But in a democracy, because though not culpable, they share collective responsibility for the policies and actions of their government, those eligible to vote are not innocent civilians. In a democracy, only those without the vote are innocent civilians. We're almost at the end of this introduction to disturbing definitions. There are other definitions of items I would have liked to explore, definitions which should be brought up to date. For example, the definition of life, death, atheism, theism, language, objectivity. Is fast food a reference to Lent or Ramadan? <laughs> but for now, it's conclusion time. So in conclusion, though we may share a common tongue, we all speak a different language. Our own particular or vague definitions of the words and phrases we use. I think it's a mistake to assume the efficacy of, know what I mean? Without accurate and agreed definitions, if we think we have dialogue, we're fooling ourselves. We have instead noise and chaos of parallel monologues. I consider myself a pragmatic idealist or an idealistic pragmatist. So to paraphrase an actor in the role of a president in a heartwarming romantic movie I saw, we have serious problems to solve and we need serious people to solve them. And the philosophy that says younger means younger and chair means chair is the philosophy of those who fear clarity, fear detail, fear depth, and hope to sneak in a dishonest agenda under the cover of noise and the chaos of parallel monologues in the guise of dialogue. Don't trust them.